Are you someone who looks forward to their birthday every year? We're going to change that today with these two disturbing stories that'll make you reconsider the next time you think about throwing a birthday bash. Just make sure not to watch this when home alone. Your future birthdays might turn into nightmares. Cult Invasion I'm not really big on birthday bashes. Typically, I prefer low-key celebrations with close friends and family. However, one particular birthday stands out for all the wrong reasons. On my 19th birthday, my friends and I were looking to do something different to celebrate. We were too young for the bar scene, so my buddy Jay came up with a wild idea, off-roading at a nearby state park, forbidden but thrilling. Equipped with Jay's trusty Jeep, a bottle of vodka, and some weed, we were set for a night of off-roading. What could possibly go wrong? Off-roading in the dark woods was against the rules, but after sundown, the place was usually deserted. The adventure began with us sneaking into the park, and once we passed the entrance, there was a narrow one-way road leading to a large open parking area with woods on three sides and a playground on the other. Some parts of the trail were rough and narrow, forcing us to navigate cautiously. It was exhilarating, like an off-road amusement park ride. Our plan was to hotbox the Jeep, getting high while enjoying the ride, with Jay acting as the designated driver. Nothing could have prepared us for what came next. We started enjoying the ride, with music blasting and the vodka bottle making rounds. As we ventured into the trails, Jay killed the engine and turned off the headlights, listening to the sounds of the jungle. Suddenly, we heard a high-pitched scream which sent shivers down our spines. We all went silent trying to figure out what we'd just heard. Jay flicked on the headlights, but there was no one in sight. Assuming that it could have been a fox or something, we resumed our celebrations, but we kept the music volume low. Time passed and we relaxed, enjoying the drinks, when nature called, and I had to step out of the car to relieve myself. While doing my business, I heard footsteps nearby. Panicked, I hurried back to the car, informing my friends about the eerie sounds I'd heard. Jay switched on the headlights, and as we sat in the car, tension in the air, we saw her, a woman with her hood up, standing just 10 feet from our car. Why was this strange woman stranded in the dark? Jay cautiously rolled down his window and asked if she was okay. Silently, she retreated into the woods. That's when my friend Carl, who was in the back seat, made a spine-chilling observation. We were surrounded. Several individuals in hoodies and sweaters stood around the car, their blank eyes fixed on us. In the midst of our collective shock, we saw a man right outside the back windshield, his expression eerily illuminated by the car's taillights. Panic set in, and I yelled at Jay to get us out of there. He wasted no time and got us out as fast as he could. Our relief was palpable when we finally got out, leaving behind the haunting experience of being watched and surrounded by the mysterious cult. Did we make the right choice running away? We contemplated the possibility that they were just young adults out for a night in the woods like us. However, their unnerving behavior and the scream we heard suggested otherwise. We never ventured into those woods for nighttime off-roading again. Stranger Danger I vividly recall my little sister's fifth birthday party, but it's not for the typical reasons. The party took place at a tea room that specialized in princess-themed celebrations for kids. Being a cool sixth grader, I didn't want to engage in princess activities, so I found myself sitting in the hallway with my Nintendo DS. That's when a woman approached me, inquiring, You're Gloria's kid, right? Gloria is my mother's name, and I nodded in confirmation. She introduced herself as Aunt Sarah, mentioning that we hadn't seen each other in a a while, she engaged me in small talk, asking about school and how much I had grown. Was this woman really a distant aunt? These encounters with distant relatives were common, and I don't think much of it. However, what happened next sent chills down my spine. Aunt Sarah told me she had brought a large dollhouse as a birthday gift and needed my help to carry it from her car. She mentioned another cake she had brought, tempting me with the first slice if I assisted her. My instincts began to murmur their warnings, but I trusted her more because she was a woman. I reluctantly agreed to help, and we headed towards the back door. To my surprise, her car was still running, with a man named Uncle Dennis in the driver's seat. My instincts began to raise alarm bells. Why hadn't I Aunt Sarah asked Dennis to help her with the dollhouse. Why was the car still running when there were plenty of empty parking spots? 
I stood, frozen in my tracks, and refused to move. Aunt Sarah's tone became sinister, and she commanded me to come to her car. I swatted her hand away when she tried to tug my jacket sleeve and yelled at her to stop. She looked furious, and for a brief moment, I thought Dennis might step out of the car. Fortunately, at that very moment, my mom and aunt appeared. Aunt Sarah hastily jumped into the car, and they sped away. I ran back through the back door to meet my mom and aunt, who were rushing towards me. The tea room was swiftly placed on lockdown, and all the kids were gathered in one room to ensure no one else had gone missing. The police were called to investigate, and I provided them with as much information as I could. The police officers promised they would get back to us if they discovered anything new, but we never received any updates. As far as we know, Aunt Sarah and Uncle Dennis were never caught. Had they gone elsewhere for their next target? The mystery was how Aunt Sarah knew my mom's name. Despite the fear that gripped me that day, I'm just grateful that I emerged from that situation and followed my gut. Getting in the mood to celebrate? Don't forget to hit the subscribe button as we dive into this last birthday mystery. Uninvited guest my 21st birthday was a celebration I wanted to celebrate in style. My uncle, who owned a magnificent waterfront house with a massive backyard and pool, generously allowed me to host a big party there. I was eager to make it an unforgettable night, so I invited all my friends and encouraged them to bring along their buddies as long as they brought their own beer. The party kicked off at 8 p.m. with the backyard as our playground. However, what began as an epic bash soon morphed into something far more colossal than I had anticipated. My friends brought friends, and unknown faces started streaming in. I was suddenly dealing with a crowd of over 80 people, and anxiety crept in as I contemplated the cleanup and potential damage to my uncle's property. Was throwing the party a bad idea? In a bid to ensure the house remained off limits, I requested that everyone stayed in the backyard. I remained vigilant, keeping an eye on who went in and out of the house. But as the night wore on, my responsibilities as the birthday guy diverted my attention. The police eventually arrived in response to complaints from neighbors, prompting me to end the party. Only a select group of my closest friends remained. About 10 of us stayed by the pool, and that number gradually dwindled until only my friend Rob was left. I knew my uncle had been clear about not allowing anyone to stay overnight, but I figured one exception wouldn't hurt, especially considering Rob was completely drunk and likely to pass out on the couch. Party over, right? Not exactly. I escorted Rob inside, ensuring that he was comfortable on the couch before going back outside to secure the property, double-checking everything to be sure. Satisfied that the house was secure, I returned indoors, ready to call it a night. However, my celebration was interrupted. A wave of nausea had swept over me, and I made a beeline for the bathroom to empty my stomach. Feeling relieved after purging the contents of my stomach, I returned to the upstairs balcony area. The music played softly in the background, and the house had fallen into an eerie silence. It was at that moment that I heard something unsettling. Footsteps emanating from the downstairs foyer. Had Rob woken up? I leaned over the balcony railing, peering down, and called out, assuming it was Rob. Rob, don't mess around. If you need a puke, go to the bathroom. The figure below stopped moving. I called out again, but this time there was no response. The person began walking towards the front door, which I had left unlocked. Panic set in, and I sprinted to the door, unlocked it, and peered outside. In the distance, I could see a silhouette of a man. Rob, come back here right now! I shouted, growing concerned for his safety. We don't know anyone here except my friends, and you could get lost or hurt. The man remained still. After a few seconds, I yelled for Rob again, but it was only then that he responded from the direction of the bathroom. What are you yelling about? Rob asked as he joined me, visibly confused. I turned my attention back to the man, who was now walking toward the bushes. Suddenly, he changed course and sprinted around the side of the house, heading back towards the front door. I locked the front door behind Rob to ensure the stranger couldn't enter. Rob went outside, shouting at the man to leave. I remained near the front door, keeping a vigilant watch. Rob returned about 10 minutes later saying he didn't recognize the man, but he had successfully chased him away. We called the police to report a trespasser, but when they arrived and searched the property, they found no sign of the mysterious intruder. Was it a party guest from before, or an intruder with the wrong intentions? The incident left me with unanswered questions about the stranger's intentions and why he was lurking outside. The experience was unsettling, especially given my semi-intoxicated state, and who knows what would have happened if Rob wasn't there to handle the situation. If these chilling stories stories were enough for you to handle. Click here to watch more horrifying videos that'll send shivers down your spine.